All right, so this is going to be more of an introductory video for my particular groups that I plan on playing. I've got one on Discord that's going to be play by post, and I'm putting together a um, live video chat game, hopefully for either every week or bi weekly. We'll, we'll see how that turns out. I've got a volunteer or two. Uh, hopefully, I'll get more players. But, anyways, so this is going to be kind of like my little introductory kind of video welcoming my players to this world that I'm putting together. So, we are going to be playing Basic Fantasy RPG, and we're going to be utilizing the Morgan's Fork campaign book. Um, as you can see, I have no shortage of materials to uh, draw from, in addition to... Um, my own personal dungeons that I have put together and so uh, this is mostly just going to be uh, a little brief introductory to the newbies in in my group that have never played this and uh, to my returning players a very warm welcome back from me it's been too long and I'm looking forward to running this game again for you guys and for our newbies Thank you for giving me the chance to be your game master for this particular adventure. I will be running it in a homebrew world that I've created called uh, Haldoran. Haldoran is a very low magic kind of setting. Uh, it Magic does exist, but it's pretty difficult to come by, so to speak. Um, we are going to be playing through this book um, to give you just a brief little little rundown is that this is mostly a skeleton right so like I have to build upon it and so I have built upon it in the past and I will build upon it this time for my returning players certain things will be uh, redone and revamped for you guys to keep it fresh and interesting and um, some of the things you loved about my previous attempt uh, will be returning, uh, albeit probably differently. And for you guys that have never played, you you're in for a treat. Um, to give you a basic rundown, uh, just as a few tips to begin with, uh, think creatively. If you approach this as a hack and slash adventure, you are probably going to die very quick. As you have probably seen in my house rules, um, I do allow death saves, but they do not work like 5e. Uh, 0 HP, you get one death save. And it's critical that you fail or pass. Uh, at a failure, you are dead. Resurrection is possible, but it will be very costly, and it will cost a level to the player. Um... That should be scary to the adventurers. And so the adventurers should be playing as a mo in, in a sense of self-preservation. Um, early levels especially. Nobody is a hero at level 1. So that's my biggest tip. Do not be afraid to run away from a fight. Do not be afraid to uh, simply run and not clear a dungeon. Come back later. You know, don't don't be afraid to do that. Um, this is probably going to be quite different than what you are used to. Um, especially some of you that are casters, you will probably notice that you do not have, especially if you're a cleric or a druid in my campaign, you do not have level one spells yet. You don't get them until level two. And magic users only get one spell. Now, my house rule is going to be that they can they can probably get up to whatever their intelligence modifier for starting spells, but you still only have one spell slot. And so my recommendation is, especially for magic users, to stock up on daggers to throw. That that way you can deal damage from a distance if you insist on, on fighting. So... Um, don't sleep on illusion spells. Do not sleep on, well, sleep. 
Sleep is a very powerful spell, especially at early level. Um, you'll notice that you do not have the kind of mechanics that you do in 5e. This is a very basic, hence the name Basic Fantasy, very basic combat, combat system. Something that is different is that there is simultaneous initiative. We roll initiatives on D6s, ties the, uh, the combatants fight simultaneously as their opponent or, you know, their teammate or whatever. You know what I mean? It takes place at the same time. So if you kill an enemy, um, uh, in a round and that enemy happened to tie you on initiative, well, that, that enemy will still get to try to deal damage before it actually dies. Um, Every round, initiative is re-rolled so that certain players go first in the next round over others. You know, it kind of keeps it a little bit fresh. If you were dead last on the first round, you might be first place in the second round, and vice versa. This game is not so number crunchy. It's, like, like I said, it's very, very bare bones, and I like it that way. It keeps the pace going. Um, there is encumbrance, there is, you know, travel and timing and stuff like that, but you will, you will get, you will get used to it. And for the most part, the numbers is more of my job to remember, so to speak, but be mindful of how much you're carrying because your encumbrance does matter. And so it is your responsibility to keep up with that too. Really, the only things I can think of to say is it's going to be kind of a gritty world. Um, it's very dangerous, but that's the appeal of it. And so, to especially my new newer players, do not be upset if your character dies. It happens. I've seen it happen. It's going to happen. Um, do not... I would actually recommend having a couple of side characters rolled just in case. But that is ultimately up to you. Um, the optional rules that are available in the back of this book, if you've taken a look, I will be using those in a lot of ways. Um, magic research is going to be hard to come by. Magic is understandably very low. Uh, in this campaign, as I previously explained, and so therefore it is very costly to study spells, but it is very much worth it if you can, if you can have, if you can get the money for it, and to get the materials. Um, really, that's all I can think of to say. This this game is uh, tremendously fun to run, and uh, everybody that's ever played it with me. Uh, I, I had two campaigns. One was in uh, a homebrewed world, and the, the, another one was in Morgan's Fort. Um, both groups, it was very well received. And so, to my returning players, you are rising from the ashes of the first foray into this. You are rising from the ashes of uh, of a group that I did not have time for at, at that particular moment in my life. Uh, it was hard to run and being so busy as I was. And I thank you for giving me another chance. And I thank you for being willing to put up with me once again as we go into the brink. You guys are going to be in for a treat. Uh, like I said, there's no shortage of materials here. I have plenty. Just to kind of give you an idea, I have Morgan's Fort, Fortress, ta Tomb and Tower, Strongholds of Sorcery, The Chaotic Caves, Monkey Isle, Saga of the, the Giants, Adventure Anthology number one, and then Adventure Anthology number two. Uh, I have all these. In addition to my own homemade dungeons that I'll be running. And of course, I have the field guide for more monsters. And also have the equipment emporium. 
I mostly only have this that way uh, because it has a lot of starter packs in it and it makes it really quick to fly through because most, and if it has a few extra gear in there and like some rules for pets and da da da, you know, so it, it, it's there. <sighs> Hate the artwork though. Um, so, and of course, I would be remiss uh, if I failed to mention the core rules. Uh, this has everything we need to run the game. It really does. Um, this has become my favorite system to run. I've run quite a few systems, including one that I homebrewed, uh, that I homemade, and I s still keep coming back to this because this is just such a fun, fun system to run. And so I understand, especially for our newer players that are coming from 5e, where it's so bare bones, might not necessarily appeal to you at first glance, but I promise, once you play through the game and you start getting your, your feet wet, you'll, uh, you'll find it a very enjoyable experience. So, again, thank you for playing in my game. Take care. God bless.